In the last segment, we handled the left Riemann sum, an approximation for, in this case, the function y equals x squared from 0 to 4. But that's not the only Riemann sum that's possible. For example, we could still work with the same uniform width rectangles as before. And I've emphasized previously that to be called a Riemann sum, the rectangles do not have to be uniform width. But this time we could use a different point on the x-axis for determining the height of each rectangle. Namely, what if we used the rightmost edge of any given rectangle? So in other words, here we'd have this height. for our first rectangle, the height of 1. For our second rectangle, we'd use the height at the edge, the rightmost edge, of our rectangle. Namely at 2, where the height is 4. The third rectangle, we'd go up to 9. Because that's the height at the edge of the third rectangle, namely when x is 3, y is 9. And finally for our last rectangle, we go all the way up to 16. Okay. We're going to call this, unsurprisingly, a right Riemann sum. And let's calculate these areas. This is going to be a height of 1 times a width of 1. That's 1. This will be a height of 4 times a width of 1. That's 4. A height of 9 times a width of 1 is 9. And a height of 16 times a width of 1. That's 16. So what does that give us? We get an approximation. That's 1 plus 4 plus 9 plus 16. And what is that? That's 30. Now notice that's quite different than the 14. So it obviously points out the fact that 1, these are approximations, and 2, depending on the assumptions we make, we can get different values for the approximations. Now, if it bothers you that the approximation varies so widely between 14 and 30, well, that's a good thing. It should bother you. Uh, but it'll have to wait for the next video segment before we talk about why those approximations aren't so bad and how to improve them. So there's the right Riemann sum. What else could we do? Well, we could pick halfway along the x-axis, right in the middle of the rectangle, right at one-half. So our first rectangle has a height of one-half squared, namely one-quarter, times a width of one. It's going to have an area of a quarter. Our next height will be right at three-halves. So its height will be nine-fourths, because three-halves squared gives nine-fourths. And similarly, we're going to have that for its area because the width is 1. Here we're at 5 halves. 5 halves squared gives 25 fourths. Here we're at 7 halves. 7 halves squared will give us 49 fourths. And so, our rectangles will look roughly like this. Okay. Now, if we add these up, let's see what we would get. 49 plus 1 is 50. 60, 75 plus 9 would be 84 fourths. And 84 fourths is 21. 
one quarter plus nine quarters plus twenty five quarters plus forty nine quarters. Did I add that right? Ten. Uh, let's see, 49 plus 1 is 50, 60, 75, 84, 84 over 4 is the same as 21. And again, unsurprisingly, we'll call that a midpoint. Riemann sum. Now, another thing we could do, if you notice these rectangles, they seem to either really underestimate the uh, value because there's a whole wedge here that's missing from our estimate or overestimate the value. So one possibility is that we don't make rectangles at all but instead trapezoids. We learned the area of a trapezoid and so we could build four little trapezoids like this. And this one goes up kind of like that. These are not the greatest, uh, most accurate diagrams, but I hope you get the idea that I've built four little trapezoids. The first trapezoid, of course, sort of by accident of the range over the x-axis that we're going this first trapezoid is a, rec is a triangle, but you can still use the same rule for trapezoids. The average of the two parallel sides, 0 plus 1, gives a half, times the width is 1. The average of these two parallel sides, this side is 1, this side is 4, 1 half of 1 plus 4 is 5 halves. Again, we're multiplying by the width, but I'm just leaving it out because the width is 1. Here I have 4 plus 9. That gives me 13. 13 halves is the average of the two parallel sides. Again, multiplied by the width, which is 1. And you get 13 halves for an area. And here I have 9 plus 16. That's 25. Gives me 25 halves. And what happens if we add those up? Well, 25 plus 13 is 38, plus 5 is 43, plus 1 is 44. 44 halves, or 22. Let's see, 1 half plus 5 halves, plus 13 halves, plus 25 halves equals 22, and we're going to call this, this is not a Riemann sum, we're going to call this a trapezoidal approximation. Riemann is strictly reserved for rectangular approximations. Now there's something else uh, kind of interesting that you might like to notice, and that is the problem with this left Riemann sum, if you think about it, the reason the number is so low is that it doesn't in any sense add this last number. It, ign it ignores all the actual heights of the parabola from three, from x equals three on. And that's why the number comes in low. Uh, here it comes in high because we ignore the zero height entirely. So you might ask, what if we were to combine the left and right Riemann sum, take their average? Would we get a better approximation? Well, let's just see what we get. Average of left and right Riemann is going to be 1 half of 14 plus 30, and that's 44. 4 divided by 2 is 22. Now interestingly enough, that's the same number that we got when we did the trapezoidal approximation. 
And in fact, it turns out that we can prove that the average of the left and right Riemann sums will always give the same value as the trapezoidal approximation. But we're not going to do that now. What we are going to do is try to sum up. So why don't you try to explain these key points on the right hand side to an eager learner and just pause the video here and explain these and then you can listen to my own summary explanation. Okay, let me just walk down the right hand side. Again, there are multiple variations on Riemann sums. We can use the leftmost point in the rectangle to find the height for the entire rectangle. We can use the rightmost edge of each rectangle to do the same. Or we could use the midpoint along the x-axis. Now, it's important to note that when I say midpoint, notice I don't mean halfway between the two heights. I mean halfway along the x-axis is the place where you evaluate the height for the entire rectangle. Similarly, we also can do a trapezoidal approximation. And I note for, I think, the third time in this set of videos that the rectangles and trapezoids do not have to be the same width, something you'll encounter frequently as we go forward in calculus. And finally, just something interesting is the fact that if you average the left and right Riemann sum for a given calculation, you'll get the same value as the trapezoidal approximation. We haven't proved it, but you're welcome to do that yourself. Or later on, uh, perhaps in this course, we will prove the equivalence of those two.